of all ages, welcome to Debate Crypto in a world where hopium collides with common sense. Starring, as always, your hosts, the Crypto Keeper, that's me, and the one and only Blockchain Crusader. How we doing, Miguel? Good, man. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. What do we have scheduled for the podium this evening? I follow Raul Pal, right? And I like his I like his way of thinking about it. He he mentions, right? He mentions the fact that Bitcoin is growing at twice the speed of adoption as the internet was back in the day. And we've seen how far the internet has come and how far Bitcoin is going so far. And you know, it's for a short period of time. And Ethereum is growing at twice the speed, you know, its network effect is growing at the twice of speed that Bitcoin is. So at an exponential rate, Ethereum should be able to hit 20K because it's it, um, he, he talks about how the charts for the 2017 bull run for Bitcoin and Ethereum's chart right now is showing the same movement that Bitcoin had, right? Bitcoin was around this $3,000, $4,000 range around this same time period back in 2017. It didn't explode past uh 10,000 until November. And I think November was still at like 8,000 by the end of November it doubled and it went up to 16,000 and then from there we went, you know, full parabolic and hit the 20k. Uh, so I think that Ethereum has enough time to run and hit the same levels that Bitcoin did uh, due to its network effect and the, you know the time left in the bull market. Um so I think it's very possible and it's just the money that's going into Bitcoin is going to eventually roll into Ethereum when Bitcoin has its blow off top. And I can I can see it. I can see it happening. Yeah, I'm with you. Before we get into the AMA portion of the uh, of the show tonight, let's let, let me hit on this. So you guys know my girlfriend, ETH, right? I love ETH. And so I talk about ETH a lot. Uh, so I don't want to bore you guys with it, but let's look at it from uh, a couple different a couple different standpoints. First standpoint is exactly what Miguel was talking about. We are essentially in the internet age of crypto. So what I mean is like we would be in like 1998 to 2000 ish, uh, you know, as it relates to when we were starting the internet versus now in crypto, right? It's still early, and so because it's still early, the the first mover advantage is really is really there, right? So Bitcoin uh, was on the front end, right? And yeah. then ETH just basically absolutely ripped up the charts in 2016, 2017, right? It really came center stage when people realized, holy crap, like we have the ability to do things in a decentralized manner, including finance. And so finance is literally what our world is wrapped around, whether we realize it or not the banks are what runs the world and the the thing that i hate about that is that we are relying on and believing in a centralized uh group of people that scratch each other's backs but don't give two you know what's about scratching your back right 100%. if we look at and i i do bring this up a lot but i can't help it if we look at the fact that we are essentially giving the banks a short term, medium term or long term loan when we put money into a savings account and that they are giving us 0.01 to 0.03 percent interest, yet they are loaning it out at an alarmingly different rate than that. It's 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 one thing, man. It's selfish, right? It is it is yeah. selfish and it is all about getting the uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just basically getting Getting greed, getting getting that. Uh, it, it, it's all about it's all about elevating themselves, elevating their product, yeah. and anything that ha that gets in the way, we're just going to stomp on it, right? Because we're the bank, we have the power. You you know what? You need to transfer. You you need to to get a check in there in one day. Well, you better have a big enough to you better have a big enough account that we can verify that, even when it's going from the same bank to the same bank, but just because it's our rules, right? There's just so many little nuanced things that banks do that just stink, man. So yeah. I think once once people started realizing in 2016, 2017, like, hey, or actually it's 2017, 2018, I, I misspoke, I'm sorry. Once they started realizing that, um, that we could do 
we could do decentralization on a financial scale. That's when things started to turn. Now, fast forward to right now. People have seen ETH rip from a couple dollars all the way up to you know 1400 last run. Now they've seen it rip up from a couple hundred dollars in, in March or a hundred and something bucks, 200 bucks in March of 2020 when the crash happened all the way up to ultimately the all time high, which was like 44, 4,500. I forget the exact number in there. So it's it, the asset price is there for people to say, Hey, we can make money with this. But on top of that, everything is being built on top of it. So there is so much being built on ether. Listen, Everything has its little drawbacks. You can talk about gas fees. You can talk about, oh, it's not the fastest network. You can talk about all of those little nuance things that you that you want to complain about. But the reality is the most projects are being built on top of ETH. It works. It is an actual ecosystem that is being used where a lot of crypto right now is all hype, right? For example, Cardano is all built on hype right now. It's not actually, you know, smart contracts aren't actually in effect yet. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I, 20K, absolutely. My only holdback with that, and, and you know that I'm pretty um, conservative with, with some of my, you know, some of my, my call outs, right? My only holdback with drawback with saying that, because you know, if anyone would love to see a 20K ETH, it'd be me. Um, yeah. My only drawback and my only holdback on that is that I see too much just chaos going on right now where I just feel like uh, I won't be surprised to see something negative happen in our economy um, to, uh, you know, possibly negatively affect. But I think, I think that's all going to happen at a timed moment after big uh, crypto hits the top. Um, I think they're, they're timing that. I think they understand that, you know, there's, we just got the report, right? Where the job report was a lot lower than what they yep. expected. What are they going to do? The money, the money printing machine goes burr, right? They're going to print more money to keep things afloat. They want to keep the stock market happy and they got to, you know, put liquidity into it. Um, so that's going to be good for crypto in the long run. Uh, but I do agree, right? There's a lot of political unrest. There's a lot of, you know, different scenarios playing around and around the world at the same time within our country and around the world. And I think they understand. I think they're they're accounting for this. And I think they're trying to time things as per, as correct as possible to be able to cash out at the top, be able to be sitting on cash so they can buy up these assets when these assets crash. Um, yeah. So that's that's my thing about it. I think they are timing it, but I still think that you know ETH can hit 20k. It's it's the level of no matter how much the gas fees are, right? People are complaining, oh, ETH is is trash because of the gas fees are out of hand. Everybody wants to be on ETH. Every project wants to be on ETH.